What do you think to the tank? Hey, Tommy, what do you think to the algae? <laughs> You know, you've got algae problems when even your floating plants get trapped by it. Hi everyone, George here. Welcome to the GFS Gallery. It's been a while and I'm very pleased to be able to give you a huge update on the Aquascaper 1200. So much to tell you about. We've got some new equipment, we've changed some equipment, we've added some fish, we've got loads of algae, and I'm gonna show you that in more detail and what I'm gonna do about that. Hopefully how we can treat it and eliminate it in the long term. And just some overall kind of future plans for it. So try to stay with me throughout the whole video. Hope you can learn something, take some uh, tips and tricks away with you and maybe even find it entertaining. So if you do enjoy it guys, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get on with the video. So I think the most important thing to tell you about, first of all, is we've got fish in there, Nimrods in here, we've got the Garamis, we've got the Harlequin Rosboras, we've got the Green Neon Tetras, Glow Light Tetras, Shrimp, and some Dwarf Chain Loaches. So all of the fish that were my previous aquariums, which are now all empty, are in here. I did want to stock, you know, a, a completely new fish for this aquarium, but part of me didn't want to get rid of the old fish. I didn't want to rehome them kind of unnecessarily. I do think this is an ideal home for most of these species long term. My biggest concern was, is Nimrod going to be happy in here? Because there's a lot of circulation. We'll talk about that in more detail later. But I don't know if you can see him right now. I'll, I'll get some B-roll for you, some overlaid Im images of him. But he's loving it in there. All the fish seem really happy, all active, all feeding really well. And actually it's a refreshing change for me to have lots of different species in one aquarium. I tend to only stock one or two big shoals of small, small fish. And it actually gives a kind of lot more colour, a lot more movement, a lot more interest. Maybe not so natural looking because we're kind of mixing tetras and rosboras which come from different continents. I wouldn't necessarily, you know, mix garamis with tetras for instance. But I think, it, I think it kind of works in here. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. So happy to see the fish in a, in a new home, really enjoying the bigger space compared to their old home. So that was the, that was the reasoning behind moving the fish in the Aquascaper 1200. Okay, let's talk about lighting. Now, many of you may have seen my previous videos where I kept talking about the Newcastles, the A360Xs. I've decided to postpone fitting them and actually go back to the Twinstar 1200S. The reason for that is I really wanted to see how it would bring out the colours in the fish and I just wanted to really prove to myself that it could grow plants and just see how it works long term. And this is the great thing about using these products in the long term so you can see if they work and if they don't work and whether you can use them for yourselves or not. It is a very different light, the colour is very different we don't get the shimmer effect that we enjoyed with the Kessels, but the color rendition arguably is a lot better. Whether or not it's better than the 360X, uh, that's to be decided when I do eventually fit that at some point. Another bonus to using the twin star is that I could get rid of these lighting arms which were suspending the, the Kessel. Future, if I did want to refit the Kessels, I can just reuse these mounts here, or I can move them to the back corner so we're not spoiling the view. Um, as you may know if you watched any of the previous videos from this scape. In fact, I'll leave a playlist up there because I did a whole playlist how we stripped this down and rescaped it, etc. You'll know that I sit just behind where the camera is now, viewing the aquascape from this way. So it's really great not to have this big metal bar obscuring the view. Okay, let's 
talk about algae. So there's no getting away from it. We've got some algae issues, everyone's favorite topic, and probably the number one reason people give up the hobby and the number one problem people have with their plant aquariums. The subject of algae is worth a complete series of videos on their own, but we'll talk about it in a little bit more detail and how it applies in this aquascope in particular, because I think it's uh, some lessons for everyone here. Algae is the result usually of a few things, but mainly an imbalance of light, nutrients, uh, circulation, uh, maintenance. If any of those things are out of kilter, the consequence tends to be algae. In summary, uh, if your plant growth is poor, then your algae growth is more likely. So if you're not planted heavily enough with enough fast growing plants, this is a huge algae trigger or a huge contributing factor to algae. And that is, I think, the case with this aquascape. We planted almost completely with slow growers, crypts, ferns, anubias, bucophilandra. I added some floating plants as well to hopefully combat the algae, but it hasn't worked. Um, there's other contributing factors as well. We used a brand new soil substrate and ideally I would have been doing daily water changes after that for at least the first week. I didn't have time for that. I was in Germany for a few days. I've been in Denmark all last week. I did have a friend come over and do some water changes for me, but they clearly haven't been enough. And the consequence is algae. We've got lots of filamentous algae. There's a few different uh, species. Uh, I don't know what the species are, but you can actually see a difference in the structure of the kind of hairs, if you like. Some are thicker and more gray, some are green, some are brown. I've even got some cyanobacteria in there as well. And from a distance, it probably looks okay, but I'll get some close-ups for you in a moment and you'll see clearly uh, that all is not okay. I have added some Helanthium tenalum, which used to be known as Echinodorus tenalus, is a fast growing carpeting plant. That's getting infested with algae. Uh, the moss is infested. There's loads of hair algae growing on the wood. Here we've got BBA or black beard or black brush algae, depending on what you want to call it, infesting the edges of this Bucophilandra here. But I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna strip it down and start again. I want to show you guys it is possible to defeat it. There are no magic cures, in my opinion. You know, you could overdose Exhale, you could blast it with hydrogen peroxide, but I wanted to show you a chemical free way of hopefully defeating the algae in the longer term. I am home now for the next couple of weeks or so, so I will be dedicating a larger amount of time while I'm at home on this aquascape and hopefully showing you step by step of hopefully how we could defeat the algae and turn this into a beautiful aquascape. So hopefully lessons for everyone. Okay, now is the painstaking process of removing manually as much algae as we can. Go through every square inch of the aquascape and painstakingly with tweezers or my fingers or a toothbrush, get rid of as much of it as we can. We could use chemicals, we could use, a lot of people like to spot dose with uh, glutahaldehyde products such as Secam Flourish XL or something like hydrogen peroxide. But, you know, I like to show that you can use manual methods, natural methods to get rid of your algae and more importantly, to prevent it from reoccurring. Uh, with algae, we need to get rid of the cause. In this case, the cause is poor plant growth. So after getting rid of as much as we can manually, I will put some more fast growers in there. I'll be very scrupulous about waste organic management. So bigger, more frequent water changes, keeping everything as clean as we can, not overfeeding the fish and just keep keeping on top of things. You know, algae is normally a punishment through lack of maintenance and lack of healthy plant growth. It's a long process. So let's do a time lapse and I'll start rambling. <laughs> removed as much algae as I can. A lot of the leaves were really badly coated, so I removed those leaves completely from the plant. Hopefully that will stimulate new leaf growth and we'll end up with a nice, healthy, fresh plant, which will have the ability to fight off future algae. 
Now it's a case of cleaning the glass and doing a huge water change. The reason we need to do this huge water change is by the act of moving the plants, removing the algae, there'll be a lot of algae floating around the water right now, a lot of waste organics. We need to dilute that, otherwise that's going to trigger future algae growth. So I'll be doing at least probably 70-80% water change. We drain the water down to here to make it safe for the fish, but obviously getting rid of loads of that uh, waste organic laden water. Also, I thought I might move these. What do you think about maybe putting them over the back here? So we actually we have this completely free to look in the side. I'll, I'll have a little play and see, see how it looks. I've just spotted some more algae there. So much. Okay, so I've maintained the tank as much as I can. I've removed as much of the algae as possible, trimmed the worst affected leaves, cleaned the glass, done a huge water change, cleaned the filters. There was a Biomaster filter, super easy to clean with the quick release pre-filter, run it under the tap, squeeze the sponges, super easy. Now it's a case of regular maintenance. So I am going to attempt to do at least a 50% water change every two or three days and be really scrupulous with the maintenance. I am going to plant more heavily with fast growing plants. So I'm going to put a load of weeds in the back, probably a mixture of Rotala, Ludwigia and Hygrophila. Probably nip to Aquarium Gardens tomorrow and get those. Probably doesn't look so bad from, from the camera right now, but I'm just looking at the close up of these leaves and it's, it's pretty bad. You know, in fact, I can see loads there, which I missed. Some BBA, all different types of hair algae. There's even some cyanobacteria in there, blue, blue, green, blue, green algae or slime algae, um, which I haven't experienced in a long time. So yeah, definitely something to keep an eye on. I am confident that I can turn it around and, you know, evolve it into something really lush and beautiful. Might even plant some more foreground carpeting plants as well. Uh, let me know in the comments what kind of plants you'd like to see in here. What extra plants would you like to see? Uh, always read your comments as you know and try to reply to as many of you as I can. I hope you enjoyed this one guys. It's been a while since I've done any filming from the gallery. It's great to get back in the zone and hopefully you can expect a lot more content from the gallery soon. Loads of empty tanks. It's quite overwhelming actually. I'm looking at all the empty tanks that I need to do but I'm determined to kind of keep it more quality over quantity. I'd rather just have one or two really high quality aquascapes rather than seven that are always, you know, not looking great. So um, it's tempting as it is to just set up a load of tanks. I, I know that it's going to be really hard to keep on top of them all. So give you a quick uh, tour of inside the cabinet before I go and some b-roll at the end. Okay, under the cabinet we have two ORSA Biomaster 600 thermos quick release pre-filter, inbuilt but removable heater. This just slides out if you need to change it or remove it. And this one has the Aquascaper glass pipework set fitted, which has a surface skimmer, keeps the water surface absolutely clean, no scum, and also well oxygenated. Uh, this one has the inline diffuser from CO2 Art fitted. That's attached to the Greenleaf Aquarium regulator, super high end. 
refillable gas cylinder there. This is, I think, is six kilograms or about 10, 12 pounds from Aquarium Gardens. Running about three to four bubbles per second on the inline diffuser. I like inline diffusers on larger tanks. I find the CO2 distribution is a lot better. And then we've got my new gadget. This is the P1 doser from D&D, the aquarium solution. This dose is automatically 10 millilitres of Tropica specialised fertiliser every day uh, just before the lights come on. Uh, this is all programmed on my phone via Bluetooth, by the app, which is very simple to use. Uh, I have my lighting there. This is only on for six hours at the moment to help reduce algae. I normally have it on for eight hours. This is the Twin Star 1200S, which we talked about earlier. And then at the top there is the timer for the CO2 which comes on three hours before the lighting and goes off at the same time as the lights go off. So that's it in the cabinet. Uh, it's quite sort of high-end equipment, um, you know, two great filters, really good low quality liquid fertilizer, great quality CO2 system, automatic dosing pump and the whole kind of result is hopefully to create a beautiful aquascope which is uh, supposed to be algae free, but we're, we'll get there in the end, I'm sure. Here you can see the aquascaper glass pipework set. This is the surface skimmer here. And then here we've got the, this is the, a glass U-bend that's attached to the auto doser. And this uh, dose is 10 millilitres of the Tropica specialised nutrition every day. And here, this is connected to the Nano Plus Twin Star steriliser. And then I've actually moved the right hand side inlet and outlet to the back right corner. So this actually leaves the area on the right hand side to be free from any obstruction so we can see into the aquascape perfectly. guys that's the end of this video really hope you enjoyed it if you did hit the thumbs up drop me a comment below what extra plants would you put in here if any and what do you think to the fish do you think they're a good choice in here or would you rather see something else just to summarize you know even full-time aquascapers suffer from algae problems and more importantly what we can do to hopefully prevent them from occurring in the first place and failing that how to treat them so I'm fairly confident that we can get over these algae problems over the next couple of weeks or so. Regular water changes, keeping on top of looking after the plant health, minimising the accumulation of waste organics, etc. Really look forward to giving you more updates over the next couple of weeks or so. Hopefully get to escape at least one more tank in the next two weeks for the gallery. So uh, keep your eyes open for that. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell to be sure you get notified every time. I upload a new video. You take care. Keep on scaping. Cheerio.